listen can you stand in your office and watch a check of 100 million 1 billion at the expense of your faith and you close it and shake the person and say thank you for your human sincerity but I love him more than that and walk away and allow other people to say you are stupid while God says well done how many of you today will be able to watch money cars houses that will affect your integrity and watch it and say thank you i know that you think i will come and marry you just because of money thank you i know you're a rich man i know you're a great man but you don't love jesus i've had you insult jesus I've heard you say a lot of things. I appreciate your wealth. I don't downplay it. But I'm, I'm not that cheap. I am the daughter of Abraham. I appreciate you, but I'm on my way going. And other people will say, is, is your head working well? God brought such a rich man. It doesn't matter whether he's a wizard. Provided he has money, just no. Believers have cheapened themselves so much. Now, I don't downplay. I'm teaching you on finances and I'm going to pray for you. But listen to me. For some of you, God is speaking to you. You need to repent. Even if it's the devil that says, come. Once he shows you money, you're on your way going. You will say, Lord, I'm coming. And you're on your way and you'll find yourself in hellfire. Please, money is not everything. Money is important. But Jesus is everything. You are the thirst. You are the stream You are the hunger living deep inside of me You are the food that satisfies You are provision for the journey of my life Koinonia would rather meet outside under a tree huh? than to get money by crooks and by pranks for as long as I live and for as long as this ministry serves Jesus nobody will manipulate you to get money or dollars or whatever it is no 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 not under the guise of anything you will give will challenge you to give but not manipulation listen I know what you are hearing is uncomfortable but please just trust that I love you and that I'm teaching you the truth we need to get away especially especially our generation of young people this this way we have cheapened ourselves all because of money I can do anything provided you will pay me kill yes steal yes destroy yes I would join any group remove my heart remove my brain just give me money and we think it's not an issue a generation that becomes so vulnerable to money a generation that worships money is a generation that will destroy its civilization i'm telling you this is what satan wants you see this happening across the globe and especially in africa i'm sorry to say this but every bad leader was once a bad child they don't just get into government and start being corrupt no it's been a practice corruption from school malpractice and you go scot-free am i right on that any it starts graduating like that until now you sit down as a a, a board member or whatever and all you are thinking about how many politicians think about the people they were sent to serve they may talk and speak nonsense on tv but you know that if you probe sincerely for many and, and i'm not just, i'm speaking globally we need to have a conscience that loves god it matters how the money comes not just that it comes what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul can i tell you there are many people who have been lifted by god today because of their heart for him they may not have known much but my god their love for him it 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 made it makes it look unfair if they remain like that 
and you see God will bring strategic relationships to their life. Somebody who just shows up for that family and begins to lift that family. Someone who just shows up for that company and begins to lift that company. There are people who have almost zero financial intelligence. They don't have anything but the one thing they have is a heart for God. And you will see that God will bring somebody to say, I've been instructed by God to come and help your family. Number two, what is the second key to be free from financial captivity? Mental transformation. The second key, I'm not discussing it, I'm just writing it. The, the second key, if you are not transformed mentally, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be sustainably wealthy. You can be, you can be rich overnight by someone blessing you either by favor or relationships but sustenance is a product of intelligence and transformation is the reason why organizations cannot manage their resources families cannot manage their resources there are families where the father is working the mother is working the children are working but they are always in lack something is wrong and the problem is not just demons there is a bankruptcy of mental transformation and mental transformation is not a gift. You buy the truth. Are we together? And when you buy the truth, you use it. You, 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 you submit to transformation. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mental transformation. You will never rise even financially above your mindset. You can receive money overnight. Someone can bless you. But the sustainability of wealth is a product of mental strength the bible says strong men retain wealth i have told you here the easiest part of wealth is becoming it retaining wealth is not luck you can actually have money somebody can bless you maybe some inheritance you see favor can walk around for you that is why you see we give testimonies in, ch in church praise the lord apostle gave a prophetic word and somebody just called me out of nowhere and gave me five million congratulations now wisdom should continue where favor has stopped but because there is no transformation that person will celebrate five million and still be begging after two years are we together favor is not the only thing you need in your life it is important controls the arrival of financial resources but to be able to manage your entire wealth system you need a transformed mind and that will require outsourced intelligence are we together now most people do not invest in strategic mental you know mental work to build yourself go and listen to my teachings on mental transformation i have taught how mindsets are formed and i have taught you that there are certain mental traits you need to not only attract wealth but to sustain it for instance um frugality frugality is a mindset that helps you to maintain the wealth that you have are we together it is clear financially that you don't spend your capital no when you spend your capital, it is wrong. What God gives you, what favor brings is capital. And then it is up to wisdom now to provide strategies for increase. What you enjoy and spend and sit on is that which comes as a result of increase. And even increase has a, a formula for spending it. When the people came and ate bread and fish, they littered everywhere and went away. And Jesus the wise, Jesus the transformed, told them, gather the crumbs. In other words, just because I have the power to bring forth, the man who multiplied bread was attentive to crumbs. And the ones who did not have the power to attend, they threw their crumbs away, forgetting they will be hungry a few hours later. Are we together? Frugality is a mindset alone. The, the quality of making sure that you cut away wastage from your life. The presence of abundance is not a license for carelessness. Many people are too careless. You are in all kinds of groups that are not profitable to your life. Physically and spiritually, cut away from them. Because it's eating up of your finances. Organizing all kinds of programs of 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 um 
activities that are senseless completely senseless as far as your future is concerned hallelujah there are many of us if we are to be honest god has been faithful in terms of inflow of financial resources it is because of the absence of mental traits like frugality mental traits like gratitude mental traits like honor i was sharing with them in zaria and i said if you develop if you cultivate a mindset of honor and gratitude alone you will not be poor your life will be improved and enhanced in a way that will surprise you listen if you are in any kind of relationship and you do you feel you don't have enough value to contribute let me tell you what to bring to the table bring gratitude and bring honor it becomes a sufficient contribution in that relationship that means if you cannot provide the technical skills at the back end of that relationship provide gratitude and provide honor that means you are in a relationship whether a spouse whether a business relationship that seems to look one-sided one person is the one doing the job it will remain unfair until you balance it introducing gratitude I may not have the technical skills you brought me in this oil and gas company I know that I'm not adding anything so much in terms of my intellectual um, you know capacity but just to let you know that I am grateful thank you so much for being attentive to my family thank you so much for even making me a shareholder in this company I do not take it for granted and the board members unanimously will say no, retain this guy there he may not be contributing anything, but we like him because you are providing psychological support. That is your value. But where you do not have your intrinsic technical value and then you now garnish that kind of bad picture with ingratitude and dishonor, you're on your way out from wherever you are to the realm of the poor. For some of you, as you are listening to me now, let me challenge you. After I told them again in Zaria over, the, over you know, the weekend, look for five people in your life who have been active contributors, even financially to your life. Send them a very generous, lavish text expressing your gratitude. Daddy, thank you. Don't say I didn't ask you to give back to me. Childish, childish, childish. Don't do that. Or your boss. Don't say I'm working. It's not a favor mm -mm. it's not whether you like them or not that you are responsible and you are matured enough to send a text and i've told you how to communicate gratitude here in koinonia the way you communicate the goal of gratitude is to make the giver perceive that you are grateful and it is your your responsibility to invent every expression that makes the giver perceive until the giver perceives that you are grateful you have not yet communicated gratitude so for instance if in your world the only way you say thank you is one word thanks you are going to be poor are we together it is true someone gives you a house you say thanks gives you a car you say thanks pays the school fees of your children thanks no and for people who can disturb they will send five text messages in 10 minutes just to remind you i'm sure you've forgotten you were saying you will do a transfer i know that you are busy can i just remind you again and then when the transfer comes is by the next day you now say oh i forgot i saw it thanks you have closed that door and even though it's the year of open doors you will be surprised that you use your own hand the door that prophecy opened that you close it and stood at the back to make sure that door does not open again say amen. amen please do it listen i will not teach you what will not produce results i'm not here to waste your time to just shout amen and go back and return back no i want you to return with testimonies and say apostle last week i sent a text to someone who i worked for I worked for in 20, uh, maybe 2018, 2017, and I just sent him a text. Sir, just to appreciate you, I was inspired in church today, and I thought to just, just um, reminiscing on your kindness through the years. And this is me expressing my heartfelt gratitude. The Lord bless you. I still recall your kindness. The Lord increase you. The next time you hear a call by 11.30, where have you been? Are you now walking? No, sir. Come and see me tomorrow that's it 
you can drop your prayer request on the ground and dance around it that's a spiritual principle praise and the rest but if that is the only thing you do you may be disappointed remember they are called forces of advantage not one force so when you isolate one maybe just the power of praise you see that how do you now link up with the person who should help you some of you are in business partnerships you can take the time convey a meeting you are not necessarily discussing anything around the business i just want to appreciate you and subordinates don't sit down and be waiting or or leaders and superiors don't wait for your subordinates to say thank you alone humble yourself and tell your people thank you whether you are a pastor a father can tell his wife and children thank you am i right on that a leader a ceo of an organization don't say it is my company the lord gave the word but great was the company of them that published it success is a composite of many factors and you must appreciate the several units that contribute to that success and do it do it consistently thank you so much i just called for this meeting to appreciate all of you this company has experienced astronomical growth we still have a lot of milestones but I thought it was very responsible i was inspired to call all of you together i appreciate you you mentioned the units one by one and you see the people trying to be serious and trying to laugh they can't believe that their boss is a person who is saying thank you they can't believe that their superior is the one appreciating them let somebody talk nonsense about you and that's when you will know that you have staff indeed because that gratitude that gratitude plants a jealousy for you in them that beyond the salary or whatever system of reward you are communicating to them their love for you becomes concretized by your communicating gratitude same thing with fathers sometimes you just call the workers within your house or wherever and say just to tell you thank you do you know you can give gifts and yet not express gratitude it is not all about giving money or giving things that communication articulates your gratitude it's an assignment I'm giving you. You are a pastor. Go back and do it for your leaders. Don't do it every day. Be consistent, but don't do it every day. Otherwise, there is a generation you are going to produce. An entitled generation. That's the Moses kind of generation. By the time you over pamper people, you take away that, that stamina from them. They become children. Ever dependent. And they feel entitled but there is a healthy interjection of thanksgiving especially from superiors do this as a man of God gather your pastors who labor your workers and let them know that you appreciate them it's not about money it's about your heart and watch what happens and teach your people koinonia global I will teach you gratitude until you get it I, I am a recipient of the power of gratitude someone will always remember you this man is a grateful man who do we look for to be the nigerian um, representative of this company well he doesn't have that kind of qualification but remember that the job that we're running is very social and we need somebody who has this kind of people skill this man has a very warm countenance he's a grateful person and you'll be surprised you will stand there just looking at your qualification without learning all of these things and having the right mental construct someone who may not be able to speak english very well but he knows how to say thank you very well that's the person who keeps going forward if you believe what i've said shout amen, amen. wow what a powerful message from god's servant i want to know where you're watching from just write it in the comment section tell us the part of the message that ministered to you the most while you're doing that, I want you to please click on that like button, subscribe to our channel Transform Daily, share the video you just watched to somebody so that it can bless their lives. And we'll see you when we post our next video. Bye.